Labor, <laughs> Labor is a party of parliamentary reform and not a pressure group. And we can only pursue our goals of a better, fairer Australia with the support of the Australian community. However, we must remember at all times that they are the goals for which we seek support and not be sidetracked into seeking popularity for the sake of popularity. Our task is to argue for our ideas and values and not for our personal interests. The party belongs to those who belong to it and support it and not merely to those who represent it and are employed by it. As Neville Rand said in the speech in which he announced his intention to retire from politics, without the party, the leaders, the politicians, the officials are nothing. No individual, however powerful, however talented, however gifted or plain lucky, can claim to have given more to the party than he has received from it. Those of us who occupy parliamentary or organisational positions with the party are entrusted with the responsibility for strategic and political decisions by those to whom we must be accountable, the members and supporters of the Labor Party. Changes to our rules and structures must reflect that. The shocking decline in party membership is the consequence of the declining role of Labor members in their own party. We need to return real power to the membership. Directing resources into recruitment and community organising to rebuild our grassroots is essential, but it will be fruitless if party membership remains meaningless. Labor members must have a say in candidate selection and in party policy and in the direction of the party. We must restore real membership rights for members and deliver new rights as well. This includes the direct election by Labor's membership of at least some of the delegates to the National Conference, members of the National Executive and of party officers. Democratic rights must exist at a state and territory level as well. Democracy and debate leads to better decision making. We are wholehearted believers in this idea when it comes to the broader political arena and we must enshrine those principles in the way our party works as well. New ideas, disagreements and discussion are not the enemy of the ALP. They are our strongest weapons in the long and continuing struggle to bring a better life to millions of Australians. Anything that is the enemy of democracy and debate in the ALP is the enemy of good decision making too. Labor must have a culture of inclusion. We need new forums, not factionally dominated, for discussion and debate. Forums that reflect the tremendous changes that have taken place in the way Australians live, work and organise since the branch structure was developed in the 1890s. Our structures must reflect the ways Australians of today engage with politics and the community, not the way their great-grandparents did. Attendance of the local branch is no longer a key indicator of an individual's commitment or contribution. Party engagement must not be, as it is now, an arid plain of tedium across which we require people to trek to prove their devotion before declaring them worthy of having a say. This culture of inclusion must also take in our many millions of supporters. Without them, Labor has no future, but they have no way to be involved with or support Labor outside of an election. We must include them in the development of our party and encourage their more active involvement in the party. We should broaden our policy processes to allow more voices to be heard and we should include supporters in candidate selection in local areas. 
Now, I know this is a contentious issue for many who fear that without the requirement of not only membership but branch attendance to qualify for a pre-selection vote, our membership will plummet and our branches will close. Well, I say to those people that if we are a party that is only worth belonging to and participating in for the chance to vote in those increasingly rare pre-selections, not determined by a fix or an intervention, then we deserve to lose those members and see those branches close. And I say to those who resist the opening up of our structures to more participation and more democracy because they see their control over managed and pre-negotiated outcomes slipping away, do not act like the ship's captain steering for an iceberg, refusing to turn over the wheel to a more competent navigator in determination to remain captain, even if only of a lifeboat. <laughs> the resistance to reform by some within the ALP has made me very pessimistic, ladies and gentlemen, about the possibility of achieving meaningful change in our party structure and organisation. As is the case in any institution, those with the power to affect or to prevent change are always those most advantaged by the existing structures. I had believed, and I still hope, that the stark reality of our circumstances would break through the very human disinclination to surrender power and influence. But ladies and gentlemen, it seems that the most difficult part of the reform process will not be structural, it will be cultural. And no structural reform will have effect without a commitment to cultural and attitudinal reform within the party. Many of the ALP structures and rules create barriers to participation. But even if we had the most open of organisational structures, we would also need the commitment and desire to use them properly. Participation in the party must be made meaningful once more. Members and supporters must be heard as well as permitted to speak. Party officials must stop regarding conviction as weakness and values as inconvenient. Ladies and gentlemen, neither structural nor cultural reform will be an easy process. Too many of too few power brokers have too much invested in the perpetuation of the current system in which their own personal success is barely affected by Labor's electoral success. Too many have too much to lose in an open democratic party where they could no longer count on the delivery of jobs and promotions. But ladies and gentlemen, there is also too much at stake for too many Australians. The Australian Labor Party was formed because working men and women in Australia needed a voice in Parliament. They needed a government that would understand their needs and that would use the resources of the state in the interests of all the community, not merely the few. The need for such a party still exists, and it will still exist even if Labor should fail the test of reform. We must live up to our responsibilities to those people who depend on us, who depend on our party to represent them. The task before us is hard, but ladies and gentlemen, the choice should be easy.